this site helps you to generate CSS animations. And this site gives you a checklist of everything you need to do before you launch your site. Here are 25 sites that every front-end developer should know, from sites for colors to graphics and everything in between. First up, there's colors. If you've ever been stuck on a project because you can't quite figure out a good color combination, here are a few sites that will help you out. Color Hunt and Mostly Colors are two sites that help you to generate color palettes. Color Hunt showcases handcrafted palettes created by designers. Palettes are organized by category, such as pastel, vintage, or dark. You can then easily copy the color codes to your project and save them to view them again in the future. Mostly Colors allow for more customization. You can enter a specific color code or choose a color to generate a palette based on your selection. The site then displays examples of how the palette will look and use. Usually when you use these color generators, 5 colors isn't enough to create a fully fleshed web application. But you can use the colors generated as a starting point to create a more extensive palette. Gradients can look great if you get them right. But with the wrong color combination, they can make your site look unprofessional. Web Gradients is a site that has compiled over 180 handcrafted gradients that allows you to easily copy and paste the CSS into your project to make them stand out. Lastly, when it comes to colors, ensuring contrast and accessibility plays an important role in determining the colors you use. Tools like Who Can Use enable you to enter the tags and background color codes and visualize how they contrast for people with different visual impairments as well as how many people are affected by it. The site also showcases how the color combination looks like under direct sunlight and with night mode enabled. This makes it easier to plan out your color palette when you want to ensure that it remains as accessible as possible and maintains a high contrast ratio. Next up, rewriting the same CSS can be tedious when you're just trying to get the right value for a shadow or getting the right animation keyframes. Here are a few tools that can help you speed up your workflow. Animista is a useful tool for generating CSS animations. You can choose from a variety of animations like fades, slides, and bounces, and customize the duration and timing to create unique effects for your site. The benefit of using this is that you can easily visualize how the different CSS properties affect your animation. As an example, if I wanted to use it in a project, I can copy over the class and animation keyframes and use the class name within the element that I want to animate. GetWaves is a site that allows you to easily create SVG waves for your website. Just select the direction and the color you want, and it generates the code for you which can help in separating your designs if you are creating landing pages. For example, if I use it within an example landing page here, and give it a class of wave, I can set the parent container to have a position of relative, and the wave a position of absolute. We can then push it to the bottom, and it helps to better visually separate the sections we have here. Next up, there is the Neomorphism Generator, a tool that helps you to create a soft shadow effect that's popular in UI design. Select options like the size, radius, distance, intensity, and even the direction of the shadow, and use it within your site. This can help to make cards such as pricing or user profile cards stand out within your design. Another way to use it is to only show the shadow on hover, and I'll also add a transition to all properties for 0.3 seconds to make it smoother. There is also one for generating a glass effect that gives your elements a translucent look. This can be really useful if you have a background like this, and one in kind component to stand out. If you find yourself having to rewrite the same HTML and CSS to create common layouts and elements such as custom buttons and toggle buttons, you might want to check out UIverse. It showcases collections of UI elements made with just HTML and CSS that you can easily use within your projects to speed up development. 
The elements are categorized into types such as checkboxes, toggle switches, and loaders. Next, there are a wide variety of tasks you need to complete before launching your site. Whether it is using the right format for your fonts or resetting your CSS, it's easy to forget critical steps. Frontend checklist.io provides you a checklist of tasks to complete before launching your site to ensure it's polished and product. The checklist color codes tasks based on their importance and includes tips on things like ensuring all your pages have a favicon and they are using an optimal font format. Each task contains resources that you can use to find out more about from by clicking the up arrow here. The checklist can also be found on their site or on their GitHub page. There are also other checklists on their GitHub page, such as the performance checklist, which includes a list of tasks to optimize your site's loading speed, such as resources for minting fine files and optimizing images. Next up, checklist.design also provides a checklist for what to include in different common elements and pages such as text fields or login pages. The site also includes examples and articles to help make your research process much easier. If you're stuck on finding inspiration for designing user interfaces, here are a few sites to check out. First up, there's Page Collective. This site showcases the designs of various other sites, from landing pages to pricing pages. You can quickly browse through the sites with full-length screenshots and take inspirations from sites within your niche. The advantage of looking at designs on popular sites is that you're able to see how other sites solve real-world problems and ensure functionality and user experience rather than just focusing on the aesthetics. There's also Referral, which has compiled over 12,000 full-length screenshots from a wide variety of real-world sites. So if, for example, you are stuck on the design and the user experience of a card page, you can search it up here and see how other sites have done it. Dribble is another. This site has a community of designers sharing shots of their designs and mockups. You can find inspiration for layouts, animations, illustrations, and much more here. The difference with Dribble is that most of these designs are mockups and are usually more focused on being aesthetically pleasing. Next up, finding free to use graphics and icons can be difficult whether it's illustrations for explaining your products or icons to provide a better user experience. Unsplash provides over 3 million free high-quality stock photos you can use. For example, this can be used for your hero sections to fill up the white space within them. On the other hand, if you need illustrations or icons for your site, Freepik and Icons 8 offer vector graphics and icons. The benefit of using vector graphics is that you can easily customize the colors, edit the graphics, and resize them without losing any quality using software such as Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer. Icons 8 provides a large variety of free icons with about 51 styles to choose from, making it much easier to use icons in your designs and sites instead of having to design them from scratch. Icons 8 also allows you to customize the icons right on their site and choose the appropriate size and format that you need. If you prefer to simply copy and paste some code to load your icons, Font Awesome is a site to check out. They provide kits to load the icons from, where you can simply paste the code within the head of your HTML, or alternatively, use the CDN from CDN.js. From there, you can find the icons on their site and copy and paste the tag to your site. This is a small project I did some time back, and one common use case of icons is for things such as a search icon. 
They are also easily customizable by changing the font size or font color within your style sheet. Finally, Lottie files provide free animations for you to choose from to then easily add to your website to bring it to life. Fonts are also a crucial part of any website. These next few tools can help you improve selecting and choosing unique fonts that help to make your site stand out. First up, Google Fonts provide over a thousand free fonts that you can select from and use on your site. To do so, first select the fonts that you need. You can also change the preview tags and choose from a few categories here. Next, you can select the fonts width that you need. And to use them within your site, simply copy over this code here and paste it into the head of your site's HTML. And you can start using your fonts by changing the font family now in your style sheets. Google Fonts provides the properties you need. From there, you can work with it just like any font and change things like the font weight and size accordingly. In any site, you usually also want to use about two font families usually one for your heading and another for your body tags. FontJoy is a site that can help you to generate those font pairings and allows you to visualize how they look when used together. You can select if you want the fonts to be similar, balanced or to have a high contrast. These fonts can all be downloaded from Google Fonts as well. Lastly, if you find yourself assigning random values for your font sizes, but want to be more consistent instead and have a skill for your font sizes, typeskill.com provides skills that you can implement. It allows you to select things like the font and weight. The site also generates the CSS, so you can copy it over to your style sheet and you have a font skill for your hidden tags ready to go. Above all, learning front-end development can be overwhelming with all the skills and technologies that you need to acquire, especially with the abundance of resources online. One site that can help is roadmap.sh, which provides an interactive roadmap for front-end development with all of the technologies that you need to learn, along with resources at each stage to guide you. The different stages also have check marks depending on their importance. Having a roadmap makes it easier to determine what front-end skills you need to learn and how much more practice you need to become proficient in them. It outlines everything starting with how the internet works, JavaScript, the web security, frameworks, and much more. This site also includes other developer roadmaps such as for backend development or for more specific skills such as React if you intend on specializing. Free Code Cam is another great resource. Their site contains interactive projects with certifications, from front-end development to relational databases and machine learning. Their news page and YouTube channel also contains a large number of articles and videos from a wide range of topics and development made by contributors that can help you to understand concepts and to learn much faster. Lastly, dev.tool is a site for other developers to post articles about different technologies for development. You can find everything from recommendations to illustrated explanations and animations here. So hopefully you have found some of these sites to be useful when it comes to front-end development and to help speed up your workflow. Besides that, that's all for this video. If you have found it helpful, please consider possibly liking it to help me out and subscribing to my channel for more of such content.